I honestly don't even know where to start. I, it's gonna be a hard video to film. I waited a while because I really didn't want to cry on the internet. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just I didn't want to sit here and sob. And so I'm going to try my hardest. Um, but this is a very hard video to make. And it's something that I've put off for a while. Um, as you can tell from the title of this video, I had a miscarriage. And dang it. I'm going to cry. I'm absolutely going to cry. And I want to preface this by saying like, outside of this one thing that is absolutely the worst thing that's ever happened to me i am in a really good place right now um this is horrible and this i live with every day and i think about it at least once a day minimum and oh, i have a cat hair on my chin i'm sorry <laughs> um but i literally just finished filming part of my vlog for this week that is talking about how my mom just survived cancer like my mom is cancer free and that's incredible um, but it's been a really hard year. If you hear any noise to the side, I have cats and they are troublemakers. However, I knew I wanted to film this video and tell my story because as I was experiencing this, the only thing that brought me, I don't even know that comfort is the word, but one of the only things that made me feel not totally and completely alone even though I had so much support from so many people, like I am so, honestly so blessed, um, was coming on YouTube and watching people's videos and understanding that it's genuinely not as, this sound, I don't mean this like, yay, other people have them, obviously, um, but you truly feel alone and nobody, it's, nobody really talks about it and it's, it happens. It is not as rare as we think. Um, and you're not alone. And there are people out there who are willing to talk to you. And if you are experiencing this, I want you to know that my, <laughs> hi buddy, <laughs> Milo's over here, um, that if you're going through this or if you've been through this and you are having a hard day, I am always here to talk to, um, if you've just stumbled across this video and um easiest way to contact me is probably instagram and i'm here for you because i i understand what it feels like um and i'm just gonna jump in i really don't know where to start i kind of want to do this with as few edits as possible because i do just want to share how i'm feeling um i really swore i was not gonna cry when i finally filmed this video but it's hard um and I make jokes when I am stressed and going through trauma. So that's me. I'm sorry. Um, rewind. We will just start from the beginning. We started trying to conceive December of 2020. Um, I, for as long as I can remember, since I was a child, like a toddler, as soon as I understood the concept um that a person is a mom, you know, like that, that I am a human who could be a mom. Um, I wanted a baby. I loved when I saw pregnant women, I loved babies and I have always just wanted to be a mom. And I really wanted to be a mom earlier than I was going to be, but, um, you know, marriage and making a baby requires the consent of your spouse. And so, or your partner if you're not married. Um, so I waited until my husband was ready and it was December. So we started trying and we honestly, it didn't feel fast, but it was fast. We were very blessed to conceive in three months. So in March, I found out that I was pregnant and I was over the moon elated. I have never been happier in my whole life. I genuinely, I am somebody, I'm a person who suffers from depression, with anxiety, and with um, chronic nerve pain. And I cannot tell you, everything felt better when I was pregnant. It was like a flip just switched. And maybe it was a mental thing, like I was just so happy that I was pregnant. Um, but I felt less anxious. I felt so happy. I had energy. I 
my pain, I cannot tell you, when we moved to, when we, when I started to conceive, I was on pain medicine for Lyrica, um, for Lyrica, I was on Lyrica pain medicine for nerve pain and it worked, but it didn't work. It helped. Um, I have very severe nerve pain and I literally will wake up paralyzed in the night because I'm in so much pain and I like have to, it takes everything in me not to scream out because I am frozen in pain. I cannot turn, I cannot move until that pain passes for long enough or I somehow take every ounce of energy that I've ever, ever had to like get myself out of bed and start moving. Um, and that just stopped when I was pregnant, like just stopped. And it was amazing. I felt better than I'd ever felt. I was happier than I'd ever been. Of course, like we were so excited. Um, and we were so blessed. It started so fast. I, I don't know what that sentence meant. I, we got pregnant so fast, basically. And the thing is, I truly don't even like know what details to put in. Like, I, I had literally, here's the thing. I did not think I was gonna be pregnant in March at all. So it came as a shock, even though we were trying very actively and I am a planner, you guys. I I had the app, I was tracking ovulation, my temperature, everything. Um, but February, I actually ovulated late and I actually have a vlog where I met my best friend. I live in Tennessee, my best friend lives in Oklahoma. Um, and we met at the halfway point in Little Rock for a weekend and that weekend, um, I was supposed to ovulate that Friday, um, and I didn't. I took the test and I didn't ovulate. And so I left for the Airbnb. I did not take ovulation tests because I didn't want to freak out over the fact that I had no, like, that I was going to be gone when I ovulated because I was ending up, like, I assumed it would push off and I would ovulate Saturday. Um, so I enjoyed my weekend. I came home, um, Obviously, as married couples do, <laughs> when I got back home, I missed my husband over the weekend, so we had relations. Um, and I never, and I didn't think of any, in, anything of it. It wasn't like we were trying at that point because I truly thought like we missed the boat. Um, and so a couple weeks pass and I am a big planner. I love to have adventures. So I planned a trip for my husband and I, and we were gonna go to Kentucky to Mammoth Cave National Park. I'm a big national park gal, I love them. Um, and so it was Thursday, I believe. Um, and I was like planning for this trip. And I remember looking at my app for tracking cause I knew my period was coming. And I realized it was supposed to come that day. And my period 100% of the time comes overnight. Since I got my period in I think sixth grade, my period has never once not started overnight. And so when I didn't wake up, like, you know, full blood, <laughs> um, I thought there's no way, there's absolutely not a possibility. But I had 50 of the little like cheapo pregnancy tests that come in like just the strips. So I went to pee, I dipped my little thing in the cup, um, and I literally like did not even get up off the toilet. Like I just sat there and watched it because I was so sure I was just going to put it in the toilet. Sorry, I moved my tripod. As it turns out, if you've ever taken a pregnancy test, um, at least the little cheapo ones, like you pee and then you can see the dye run to the, t the control line. Um, and up till this point, it, uh, it, that had always been it. It was white, one pink control line, white, test over. Well, after the first initial like dye ran over to the control line, there was a little bit more. And I looked at it and I was like, oh my God, there's absolutely no way. My foot's falling asleep, I have to move. Hold on, I'm gonna move you guys. Oh, my foot was asleep, I'm so sorry. So, I'm looking at it and if you have those pregnancy apps where you like track your period and you, it has like a community on it and like people will post their pregnancy tests with very incredibly faint lines. 
Um, and a lot of times there's nothing there, but sometimes there is. And so as somebody who is like desperately trying to conceive and like really actively trying, as I'm sure a lot of the people that are watching this video um, have been, um, I really knew what a very faint line would look like. Like I knew any line is a line and there was a line. I knew that if I showed my husband, if I showed my friends, um, absolutely nobody else would see it. Um, but it was there. And so I knew my husband would not believe it if I showed him that one. So I knew I had some like store-bought, like more expensive tests. So I go ahead and take one. Um, and it unfortunately was one of the blue dye tests. I had, for some reason I had two clear blue tests. I think they came in a digital test, like a box that was like two in a digital, um, because I don't ever take the blue like plus sign tests because I hate them. Um, but I took one. And again, it was a, an extremely, extremely faint line and it like so faint um, that it actually had some dye run on it. And I was like, well, this is why I don't do blue tests. There's no way I'm pregnant. This is like, it's not, but it's there. Like I see it, but it's a dye run. So it's probably not really a baby. Like it's, there's no way I'm pregnant. I'm not pregnant is what my thought process was. But I had one more and I was like, well, if it is just like a dye run, I'll just take another because there's there's no chance that there's two dye runs in a row. So I take the other clear blue test. And again, it is exactly the same. It is fainter than the other one, but it is there, but it also looks like some dye run. So like I'm freaking out. I have three tests that I think are positive, but also in my mind, like I am absolutely so convinced of the fact that there's no way that I'm pregnant this month. There's no way. So I pull out my one digital test that I have and it says not pregnant. And I'm like, there we go. I was, I'm crazy. Like I, I'm not pregnant. Like there was no way I knew it, but something in my mind was still there. Like there's no way I would have like an indent and two die runs. Like that's not a thing, right? So um, I decide after work, I am going to go get more. <laughs> After work, I go to Target. I pick up a lot of tests. I get um, like a few packs of the pink dye ones, like the first response ones, and I get um, like a two pack of digital tests. And the next day I go to the bathroom, I take a strip test. It is more positive than the day before, but it is still so light. And I'm like, there, I, my heart is racing at this point. There's absolutely no way. And I, go ahead and take another one and it's the same. And so I take a clear blue, or not clear blue, a first response to pink line test and it's there. Like it's really there. And I take another one and it's really, really there. And I take a digital and it's really, really there. And I just bawled my eyes out. I told my husband, we're so excited. We go about our life as pregnant. We tell a few people because I genuinely, like everybody I know that's had a baby like says, Oh, I'm like, I, the first trimester is so hard. All you do is worry about if you're going to lose a baby. And I, you guys, that never crossed my mind. No matter how many people told me, I was like, there's no way. Like, I'm just not scared. This is what my body is created to do. God has blessed me with a baby, the baby I have prayed for for so long. And he gave me this baby so quickly. And it's so sad because I was so confident in my ability to, and, and it wasn't me. Like I say that, like, if you're watching this, you did nothing wrong. If you have lost a child, you did nothing wrong. It's just, it's just hard. I was so confident that nothing would happen. Like it was going to be an easy, healthy pregnancy. I felt better than I ever do. And that's just what it was. So fast forward. I have my first ultrasound. I'm so excited to see this baby. Now I know there's a chance I won't hear a heartbeat because I, my first ultrasound, I was scheduled for seven weeks, four days. It was March 31st. I go in, we do the ultrasound. We see the sack and nothing else. And ultrasound techs are really quiet when they do ultrasounds. Like they're not, I don't think they're allowed to say anything. So she's super quiet. And then at the end, she goes, I think you're just really early. I think you're just really early. You probably ovulated late. And so in my mind, I know I ovulated late. I know that for a fact. And so I'm not scared still. I'm not scared. I go into my appointment with my doctor to discuss it. 
and she's worried. Like, she's not saying it, but, like, you can tell. And I let her know I know for a fact that I ovulated late. Um, I, I don't know. I really let myself. I really convinced myself that nothing was wrong over the next, like, week. Because I knew I ovulated late. But even if I sat there and I did the math, like, I was measuring five weeks. And I was supposed to be almost eight. So there was no way. I'm sorry, I have tinnitus. I have to blow my ears, like pop them sometimes. So I'm sorry if I do that a lot. Um, <laughs> it's hard to talk about, I'm sorry. Um, so she sends me on my way and she says, we're gonna we wanna see you for another ultrasound in a week. I did end up having to do <laughs> multiple videos. I'm so sorry. I genuinely don't even remember my times. I Before I could go into my second ultrasound, I started spotting. Um, it was it was like two days after that ultrasound. I remember now. Okay, I'm so sorry. A couple days after that ultrasound, I started spotting. I freaked out, as you do when you're pregnant and there's blood of any kind. I Google it, it is dark brown blood. It is very light. It does not come off on a pad. It is only when I wipe and it is not every time I wipe. So I Google it, it says to call your doctor, but it sounds normal. Um, well, here's the thing. Bleeding is never normal, but it can be common and it really can be nothing, um, but it's never considered normal. So I do call my doctor, somebody calls me back, says it sounds common it, if it gets heavier call. And unfortunately, this was a Friday. And so I go in, um, I don't go in, <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's hard to talk about. I'm really, really struggling to talk and like even think about when things happened. Um, I go into the weekend and obviously I can't, I don't have a weekend number to call, unfortunately. So a few days goes by and it is progressively getting heavier. Um, it is still brown for the most part and it is still just when I wipe and nothing is coming off on a pad. And here's the thing that sucks is that people don't really actively talk about their miscarriages and I get it because it is very, very hard. But even when it's portrayed in media, all I've ever thought of miscarriage is that you immediately start bleeding, like, like tons, like so much blood that it's so painful. And that's not always the case. Um, and in my mind, like everything I knew was you immediately start bleeding you're in a lot of pain you go to the to the er like that's what you do with a miscarriage and evidently that's not what it is so i remember it was um it was a friday because uh, no i'm sorry it was a thursday that i officially called because it was turning bright red and coming off on a pad and i was starting to get tissue um and clots when I wiped and so I called my doctor and usually I have to leave a message and somebody calls me back but I let her know hey I've been spotting for a couple days and I was told to call back if it got heavier and it was getting heavier and so she immediately gave me to a nurse um and she said can you come in today can you come in soon? We need to do an ultrasound. Um, and it was before I was supposed to have my next ultrasound. And so I emailed my boss. I said I need to leave. I went in at 3 p.m. I actually think it was closer to 4 um, that day. It was almost the end of the day. I felt so bad I was there until like after close. And they do an ultrasound. And the ultrasound tech says nothing, of course, because I don't think they're allowed to again. And my doctor had actually just left on maternity leave because she had a baby. And so I was with a nurse practitioner who is absolutely the most lovely person I've ever spoken to in my entire life. She was so good at her job. And so I go into the room after my ultrasound and she confirms that it was a miscarriage that had started and that 
if you don't have any growth in them, span of a week is considered a miscarriage. And then if I wanted, I could have another ultrasound to confirm in a few more days if I wanted that peace of mind. But I absolutely knew I couldn't go through another ultrasound because it was, it was so hard to see nothing when I should have been hearing the first heartbeat. And I'm so sorry. I didn't want to cry. She was so sweet. She answered all my questions. We were supposed to go to Oklahoma that weekend. Because my mom had just been diagnosed with cancer and I wanted to be with her. But I, um, it's a really good thing I did it because it did get worse. Um, well, she said I would feel more comfortable if you didn't because we have to test your blood to see if you're negative or positive blood type um, because I believe if it's negative you have to go get a shot um, that helps future pregnancies and I'm sorry one second um so she just sent me home and said if you have cramping on one side go to the ER or if you start soaking more than um, two pads in an hour's time span go to the ER um, and that was what was so crazy to me um, I just you think you're having a miscarriage like that's you don't just go to the ER you just go home and you pass everything at home um, I probably should have said this at the beginning, like if you're not comfortable with blood or if this is a triggering topic for you, um, I am going to talk like about everything from here on out. Like I, I'm not holding back, like it's, it's not a pretty sight. Um, so I go home, I had, I've never cried like that in my whole life. Like I cried so hard, I almost threw up. My best friend called me and we just cried on the phone together. And I was so unbearably devastated. Angry does not cover it. Sad does not cover it. Um, Milo was just sitting here staring at me like, mommy, are you okay? I love you, Bubba. He's, Milo's my cat, if you don't know. One of two. Um, I was just so scared and sad and angry more than I'd ever felt any of those emotions before. I get home, I'm laying on the couch. Um, I'm not gonna lie, there's, obviously the situation sucks no matter what, but there are people out there who have it way worse than me. I had almost no pain. Um, there were, right before I passed everything, I had some pressure in like my lower belly, like my uterus and that was it. Um, and it wasn't until the next day, like nothing happened that day. My bleeding consistently got heavier. I was wearing maxi pads. I changed them every hour, um, sometimes sooner, depending on how much it was bleeding. Um, and the next day, that evening, I remember we were about to go to bed. Um, I laid in this spot right here. I was about to go to bed. I'd had some, I'd had that pressure I mentioned. And when I stood up, I could just feel something big pass. And I had to waddle to the bathroom. And it was what I assume was the gestational sac. Um, and I cannot tell you, I've had a pretty heavy period my whole life. I have, I'm prone to a clotty period and I have never felt anything pass through me like that. It was the worst feeling. And I just sat on the toilet and sobbed. 
and I went upstairs and I went to bed. And then a couple days later, the bleeding stopped. So it was a very fast process for me. I am extremely blessed for that. Um, I need to resituate again. Hold on, I'm not super comfortable. Um, just move you a little bit, sorry. Um, so that was it, it was over. Um, it took six weeks, I think. Oh my gosh, it's been six weeks. Wow, no, five weeks, I'm sorry. It took five weeks, but still, I think it's been six weeks now. Um, it took five weeks for my period to come back. My period just ended. Yeah, it started five weeks and then it's been a week since. So my period just ended. Um, I cannot explain to you how traumatizing my first period post miscarriage was. Um, and like, I want to warn you, like if you're going through this, prepare as mentally as you can <laughs> lean on anybody in your life that you can because when you start bleeding it brings back those memories so strongly it was a heavy period but I don't think it was heavier than I was used to but everybody is different in how their first period is obviously I've read a lot of people's stories some are some are longer some are shorter some are heavier some are lighter um and I some are a lot more painful and mine was i it was a lot more painful um than my normal periods i usually i'm honestly not very crampy usually and i was super crampy um and my boobs hurt and my boobs never hurt um ever um not when i was pregnant not in prior periods never like it's just not a thing for me so it was a painful period it was a heavy period, but not heavier than I'm used to. Um, but the worst part for me was just the emotional trauma of seeing blood on a pad again, because it just took me back to that very first day that I saw the spotting. And it was really, really hard. And I, it was a work day, of course, and I had to work and focusing on anything but the fact that I should have been, I should have just announced my pregnancy. I should have just made, I had a video planned. I had an Instagram post plan. I had a Facebook post plan. I had plans to tell everybody in my life. I was so excited. I was waiting to call the people that did our wedding photography and say, hey, can we do a maternity shoot on this day? Um, and it was perfect. Mother's Day was one day after when my second trimester should have started, I think, one or two, maybe a little more, um, but we were gonna announce on Mother's Day. Um, but Mother's Day ended up being exactly a month on the dot to the day that I passed my baby. I'm not gonna lie. This Mother's Day was the hardest day of my life to date because I was still mourning the loss of my child. I was mourning the loss of my mother-in-law and I was mourning the fact that my mom had cancer and we didn't know, like we, ha we were nowhere near knowing the results at that point of like, if she was gonna need chemo or not. Um, and thank, thank God she did not. And I'm so grateful for that. And that is like the one thing that is really keeping me going right now. And the only reason I'm not absolutely still like crying like heavy sobbing every day um so that's that um so since then i'm a couple days out from my last period so we are waiting for my ovulation period um we we personally have decided to go ahead and start trying again we are in a place we are ready we want to um a lot of good things are happening in our life right now and we are very blessed for that so we are ready to start trying um and that's where we are it's impossible
impossible to put into words how you feel. Um, I felt like I was drowning. Life just goes on all around you and your world has stopped spinning, but you have to keep moving. And that is the hardest part is that all you can think about is this precious child that you've lost. But you have to go to work and you have to take care of yourself. You have to eat and sleep and shower. And all I wanted to do was lay in bed and cry. Because it was the one thing I wanted more than anything else. It was the one thing I wanted more than anything else. Um, we actually told quite a lot of people I think I mentioned earlier that we were pregnant. We had a lot of people to tell that we lost. I still have not told everybody. I haven't like made a general blanket statement. So every once in a while, I mean, we went to Hawaii to scatter my mother-in-law's ashes. She's from Hawaii. Um, and so she wanted her ashes scattered where her moms were. I remember we got a call from Austin's cousin and oh, she asked, it was like a FaceTime call and she asked how the baby was and we were headed to a luau. And I was just a wreck for the rest of the evening. Um, and that's okay. It's not her fault. She didn't know we hadn't told her yet. Um, and I don't, I don't regret telling the amount of people we told. And I don't think I will hold back when we get pregnant again. Um, because we will. We will get pregnant again. Um, and I, I won't hold back and tell less people. Like the people we told were um, our closest family and friends. And I was happy to have the support that I did. Um, but I'm not gonna lie to you. No matter how many people you have around you that are supporting you, you feel completely alone. Because unless you've gone through it, you will not understand how it feels to lose your child. Especially the actual passing. Like that part, I I don't dream very often. Um, I It's a very rare dream. And at least four times since the miscarriage, I have dreamt of that moment and I could just feel it. And it was horrible. Um, so like I said, I... I just wanted to tell my story because I, that's the only like comfort that I could turn to when I was going through it before I knew that it was a miscarriage. Um, because a lot of the things that you Google, unfortunately, a lot of pregnancy symptoms are also miscarriage symptoms. Um, and I was super early in pregnancy, so I, actually didn't have anything beyond like cravings as symptoms. Like I didn't have breast tenderness, nausea. I had some like early cramps, um, which is very common. And I had like a lot of cravings. Um, and so as things progressed and I started having like miscarriage symptoms, you know, you Google it and a lot of women have really dark brown spotting and it's okay. They go on to produce a perfectly fine baby. Um, and you know, you Google those things and you see like all these people like saying like, well, my baby was fine. And as it continues, you start to realize my baby's not fine. It is a miscarriage. Um, and I just... I needed someone else that was going through what I was going through. So if I can be that for anybody, I need to because I needed it. Um, so honestly, it never gets easier. Day to day, you learn to cope with it. Um, but you do live with it every day. Um, so if you are going through it, if you need to talk to somebody, please reach out to me. I'm here. I know how you feel. I know what you're going through. Um, 
and I'm just here. So that's my story. I hope that um, if you're going through this, that you are okay, as okay as you can be, and that you go on to have a happy, healthy pregnancy and give birth to a beautiful, beautiful, healthy child um, because you deserve it. So thank you for listening to my story, I guess. It's kind of a weird thing to say. Um, that's, that's what I have to say. So I don't know how to end this. Um, it's kind of an uncomfortable topic to talk about. <laughs> I don't know how to end it. So I hope that everything gets better. Um, for you.